Actually, let me let me just say a few words. Look, normally you'd have Matt Small um, emceeing this. Matt's on vacation this week, so that's why he's been scarce. Uh, Matt's uh, in a tent with his family somewhere, and uh, he uh, sent us an email last night saying, Debbie, you've got this. So, Debbie, you've got this. Yes, I got it. So welcome, everybody, um, to the Kwai Weekly Public Meeting today, Friday, March 29th. Uh, very happy to have you. And uh, for those that came yesterday to the town hall, um, it was a pleasure hosting that one as well. Um, this meeting usually takes place for about an hour and afterwards, we invite you to also hop on to the hackathon. Um, so the agenda for today is, let me see, uh, let's see. Uh, we're gonna start with the, um, Riza is going to do a little bit of the summit follow-up uh, activity on that. And then he is also gonna talk about the town hall recap and the next steps. Um, for the town hall. Um, we're gonna have some work group updates. Um, Balaji is going to discuss where we are with the personal AI bot. Uh, Roman is going to give us an update on the architecture. Uh, Riza, the AI fundamentals. AI policy, I think, uh, Ruth, um, I believe so. Um, and then back office automation, which was a great, great meeting. I was president of that meeting. It's going to be Eunice. Um, and then uh, Kwai funding, Riza. And then we want to hear of anybody who is new on this call. Um, so when we get to this portion of the meeting, please raise your hand. Um, there is a little icon here on uh, the Google uh, meeting so you're going to see a little hand just raise your hand introduce yourself tell us who you are how you got here um, if anybody recommended you uh, we'd love to hear from our new members so we can say hello and then it's a wrap and if you want to join us for the next hour at the hackathon even better so without further ado Reza your turn Great. thanks so much thanks Debbie mm -hmm. Um, and you don't even have to wear a matte mask. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you very much. And um, so let me let me just give you a recap of the summit. Will, I gave you a recap last week, didn't I? Um, but we are continuing with our follow up to all of the um, all of the folks that came to um, our um, summit in Pasadena, and we were mainly addressing. The developer audience. We're still in a mode where we are building. Um, we are building a movement, and our current focus is to invite more developers. About eighty percent of our activity is in development in developing personal AI. The remainder of that activity is split between research and policy development. So yes, we're also welcoming people that are deep into um, uh, neural networks and want to um, explore improvements to the way in which we do AI currently. And then we've also got several non-technical folk but are experienced in global policy development and um, have got a legal um, uh, background. And that is super important for us to um, create um, uh, draft policies that anticipate AI in the workforce and uh, in society. So look, this is a it's a it's a broad church. Our community is a um, is is a movement, and um, we think that it's not just a technical um, uh, lab. It's a it's a it's a technical think tank, and it's a policy think tank. So great. The follow up. Um, so we got a bunch of leads. Of people that visited our um, stand, all the all the people that signed up to watch the conference online, all the people that signed up to come and attend, we're following up with each of those and trying to convert those to become members. We are actually doing a great job at that. Look, we went into the conference with two hundred members, two hundred volunteers. We're now at about two hundred and sixty, so we are growing at a healthy clip. Um, and we'll probably blow through our 1,000 
member target before the end of the year. So, you know what? I think we can actually be a bit more selective about who comes into the, the organization. At least those are, are, are those that are, we should welcome, obviously, all the observers we want. But those that are going to actually contribute, we now know more what we want and we know the skill sets that we're going to need going forward and um so we can we can afford to be a bit more selective um as we grow the organization becomes um difficult to administer it was very manual initially we're automating it more and more and i'll give an update on that later on so the um the summit attracted a bunch of developers we also managed to have meetings with the open source community and we got the attention of funding sources all the way from the the regular sort of institutional funding um uh, sources uh all the way to vcs so we're now having that those conversations and in order to have those conversations we actually needed to develop clarity about what we are going to be when we grow up hence the town hall okay uh so i'm now moving into the next item the town hall um yesterday we had our first town hall i think it was an excellent um demonstration of democracy at work there were three fundamental questions that we posed to our group. Now, Kwai is um, composed of a, a board, officers, and an advisory council. The advisory council is actually headed by Toby. Toby, you're on the um, the call, but we're we're at about sixty people in the advisory council. So. What we did was we said, well, we're going to hold a town hall and we're going to have the advisory council. Those people that when they signed up the form, they declared themselves as a domain expert in the area and declared themselves as an advisor. That's all it took to become an advisor. We gave them two minutes each to express their opinion on three questions. So I'm going to reiterate those three questions. Question number one, should... Um, should Kwai participate in commercial activity? That was question number one. Question number two, should Kwai become exclusively a spec organization and not develop products? And question number three is, should volunteers participate in the upside of any commercial activity that might occur as a result of, of Kwai? So should they be gain some compensation those are three fundamental questions and they kind of entangled with each other and um rather than dictate a solution as you might as might happen in a for-profit company we wanted instead to hear and treat our organization as a super intelligence and tap the wisdom of all of the participants and so everyone can submit an opinion in the town hall slack channel or email me directly if you don't want your opinion shared more broadly the advisors could um discuss could could share their opinions verbally in the town hall look we had an hour long and there's 60 <laughs> 60 advisors so giving everyone two minutes each and expecting only 50 percent to turn up the, the numbers actually worked out well i had a few minutes opening remarks and a few minutes of closing remarks everything in the middle was um advisors um giving their opinion on on these three questions so what are we going to do next now that we've got your opinions we've got your email we've got you know, the the slack channel there's a formal process that goes on from here and uh marcus hall side i'm not sure if he's on the call um Describe to us uh, a formal process called structured democratic dialogue. I've been looking for such a process. I've been dabbling with Ed De Bono's six thinking hats, another formal process for um, uh, democratic decision making. 
And uh, we might use both of those techniques, but definitely since we got Marcus Hallside um, on, on uh, uh, choir as an advisor, um, he will guide Toby and the advisory council to uh, in that process. It is a process of mapping out all of those diverse opinions, all of those opinions, all of those answers to the three questions. Mapping them out and then picking a representative for each cluster of the opinions, and they will participate in the ongoing process. So it's representative democracy. We're not, everyone got their, their chance to, to give their input. Now you're going to have a representative for a cluster of thinking, and they will take the process forward. The end result is we'll end up with a proposition that gets put to the board for a vote. And that's how we're going to move forward. And um, hey, if it works, this is a fantastic case study for um, democracy in an organization. So um, Debbie, what's next on the agenda? Uh, we have the work groups update. Um, Balaji, you're next with the personal AI update. You're muted, Balaji. Rookie mistake. Um, I was wondering whether it's the work group update next or is it me? I'm sorry. So I, sorry, it's work group updates. Is that the same? Like yeah, yeah. It's well, the the three work groups, or or broadly, I don't know how many work groups we have now. But you're the first work group. Okay, no worries. Um, so uh, with respect to the demo POC bot that we built for the summit, there I'm still consolidating a lot of the feedback that's coming through. Um, one of the first things uh, in terms of update was um, clean up everything, post a good clean copy in GitHub. Um, so for those who are interested in looking at the code and, and contributing, please um, go to the, the Quai uh, GitHub. You should see a project by assistant. Um, we, I had a lot of great feedback in terms of um, the licensing and the open source um, uh, components of it. So I had to remove certain pieces that don't comply with that, especially the, the lip sync portion uh, of the video. So that's all done. And I also, I think, um, I have a feeling that the, the Llama Index people are moving towards commercial uh, because they moved the project into community edition. So, um, so I had to update some of that to to come up to speed. Um, so, long story short, I think we have a version that others can start um, looking at and start updating and contributing. That's that's the first portion. Uh, the second aspect is through this process we are discovering what people would like to see. I mean, that's the goal of this POC, so people can run it locally, just um, so I'm getting feedback anywhere from no humanization to um, humanization in certain corridors to legacy bots, thanks Michael for that term. Um, so all of these are getting consolidated into how can we improve this particular uh, proof of concept to the next stage. So I have a few thoughts. I think we can discuss in the, in the architecture group and, and uh, keep moving along the path of what would be the next version of this proof of concept. Um, so I, I uh, invite everyone to participate in this GitHub. So the first part, which is posting the code, keeping it ready for others to consume is done. Thank you. Great. Serge has his hand up. Uh, just a really quick question uh, to Balaji, actually. Is there any type of uh, feedback or, um, uh, um, or um, uh, yeah, feedback that you're missing or short of? So. I mean, are you, uh, do you need any more feedback on the technical side, or do you need more feedback on the um, uh, interface side, what people are wanting? Just curious. Well, absolutely. I think um, I, I'm, the doors are not closed for feedback, right? I'm still getting initial feedback again, though they are coming in through certain channels. I think the more the feedback, the better perspective you get as to what people see in it, right? I think the bigger picture is talk to your data, right? People talk to their data different ways. Um, some just want it to be a search. Some want it to be conversational. Some want it to compose a response to certain things. So, I mean, variety of these use cases are showing up. Um, hopefully, we are able to consolidate these use cases and try to see some um, common uh, modules. Again, the goal is to collect, consolidate, 
and separate some module that goes into operating system, right? We are talking about yep. operate. So, so it's going to be a sort of a lead funnel into the the bigger picture here, right? So we'll we'll curate, we'll pull stuff and post it into the bigger picture that we are developing, sort of. Um, are these any uh, um, are any of these use cases uh, or uh, desires documented? And I don't mean to distract the call, but just like literally very quickly, it's like, uh, do you have any of these cases written up? Not. I'm just really curious. I think we, this is a really fascinating aspect. I would love some volunteer. I know Lynn was doing right. some of that, and then there is nobody yeah. there to to do all that. Uh, so Love it's it. kind of a it's just me I'll operation. I'll one on one on Slack, and we'll try and figure out. <laughs> I need. Like, yeah. I would love to volunteer my time, but clearly yeah. I'm over volunteering. I, I think. I think Balaji, you know what? 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 Thank what? You. What Balaji is trying to do, and he's muting it quite a bit, is a massive call to action for participation in yes it. please yes we, we are getting we are getting traction and i'm going I'm to demo some of it not 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 all of it but we are getting traction and uh we're getting excitement uh about this and we need help and um let, let me let me just uh give you um a a quick uh demo uh I'm I'm not going to talk to the bot, but I'm going to um, right. Okay, so you've all seen this bot. This is called the the FAQ bot. This is a rag talking rag head where you um, it's a talking bot uh, with a, with a face that that can animate and it's lip sync. However, the turnaround time is very slow. It's like thirty seconds if you switch on the uh, if you switch on the video uh, to to get. The response because all of this is happening server side um so the the natural um progression would be to move some of that maybe all of the ui client side um so and there's three js which is a great library there's a whole bunch of other um javascript libraries where you can actually have the animation running there that tech actually doesn't exist in the open source community so biology is just looking at open source um, ingredients for this but I think there's there's ways in which this could um, be improved. This is running at many dollars an hour to just keep this site up all the way, depending on the traffic. So on the low traffic, we've not we've not exposed this um, the URL publicly. This is just for our internal use. It's many dollars an hour. If we want to expose it publicly, it's going to be in the hundreds of dollars an hour to to run this bot. Okay, that's a great problem to have. Now, um, uh, you, well, uh, so so search. So, you're you're asking how many dollars? Well, it's in the. I think the minimum GPU uh, instance is like two dollars forty eight an hour for us to run. The if you if you're going to go um, uh, more expensive, it could be. Uh, um, Ninety-eight dollars an hour, and de and depending on which region you're going to run it in. Okay, so horrible, very expensive, great problem to have if you've got like a massive influx of of traffic, and then you go to a a, a hyperscale and say, hey, can you host this or give us some credits? Great. Okay, we we actually we're actually not doing that. We we we've got it internal. Um, this is the FAQ bot trained on the knowledge base of what is Kwai. You can ask her, and now now we're personifying this person. We you can ask her, you know, what is Kwai? You can ask her, uh, you know, what what's the mission statement? It's trained on the founding documents of Kwai, the transcripts of all the weekly public meetings, at least up until February or so. And um and also, I think a scraping of our website. So it's got a, a, quite a good body of knowledge. Um, the the next one is a different implementation of of the bot. This is this illustrates the notion of your personal AI being your tools of the trade. This is the EDU bot. It's um, a virtual teacher's assistant. This one's trained on Professor Ruth Russell's um, English um, curriculum. So her students can now ask, when's the next essay due? Uh, can I use ChatGPT to, <laughs> to, to write? Okay, so, so, so 
one soon we're gonna we're gonna reveal this and you, and, you, and you can play with it but we we need to get some um hosting uh um support okay so we showed this to um to bruce schneier and bruce said i love that can you can you train one on all of my writing so we did that we demoed it to him and um these become ways of having conversations with key individuals to help further the um the quiet agenda so we demoed this to him yesterday well done balaji i think he liked it and um we then uh he's he's going to uh, talk with um uh harvard that's where he's a professor at harvard it will host it for us great okay that means that this now every professor there is going to want to have that for their own um, use. So it's a at the moment it's a marketing tool. It also got us a um, an introduction to Inrupt, and this is an important company that we want to um, get close to because we feel they're going to be an important ingredient in our stack. So Balaji, well done. I think you you underplayed your your your. Your efforts, um, it's really paying off. I'm going to stop presenting there. Back to you, Debbie. Sorry. Well, the next person is the architecture. It's Roman, but I don't think he's on the call. So who? We, we, we're going to, we'll skip that. Um, Roman, uh, we had a meeting. I'll, I'll give a brief update. Um, the architecture, uh, we, we specifically focused on the trust module in the architecture. Look, we're going to need help there in documenting, writing up the architecture. At the moment, it's in, in diagram form. Um, it's, uh, it's, an ongoing, it's an ongoing effort. I think we'll probably, our proof of concept and our, our reference implementations will run way ahead of having the um, architecture properly documented. The destination is a specification document that eventually becomes standardized. So we are in, we are actually in a, an IEEE working group currently, which is standardizing part of what the architecture implements. It's the machine to machine protocol. Um, it's it's um, the standardization of DocSell's project VRM. So, Roman's busy today, so he couldn't be on the call, um, but uh, we'll probably get an update from him next week. Okay, thanks, Debbie. And um, next, it's uh, AI Fundamentals, and that's you. Oh, my word. Okay. And look, um, if Kai is on the call, I wonder if Kai, I'm so, sorry, Kai, to jump on you and see if you can give an update, but this book that you recommended I read, um, Kai, if you're on the call, Maybe you can say a few words about this book and the author. No, nothing to say. Okay. Um, so the book, Fast and Slow Thinking, um, the author passed away uh, a couple of days ago. Very sad. I was busy reading the book, and I saw um, a note that, that Daniel um, Kahneman um, passed away. Great thinker in, in this notion of um, the way in which humans think. The, sl the fast thinking is that blink response that you make that probably comes from your reptilian brain, from your amygdala. It's that flight and f fight and flight response. And many people live like that. They just go through life and they make that, that blink decision. Um, there is a higher level of brain, the cerebral. Uh, I'm not a biologist, but humans have evolved higher levels of thinking part of i think what um uh my takeaway from kai's um presentation at the summit was that we're actually missing that in our ai thinking today we are missing that higher level of thinking that reasoning that rationality that's not just based on correlation um, it's based on a higher level of thinking, and um, we, we're working. At, we're working at that. Kai's working on the reasoning AI, and I'm working on causal neural networks or uh, physics-inspired neural networks. I had the first of a. Oh, I 
restarted the weekly public the weekly uh, work group meetings on fundamental AI. Restarted it last week. I'm just so super disappointed that very few people turned up to it. So part of this is a call to action. Watch the video on fluidic neural networks if you think you um, can participate in it. Contact me. I'll give you an invite to the weekly public meeting. Kai, you've got your hand raised. Yeah, uh, of course, Reza, this is a topic that is dear to me. Um, and um, so this is a, a fantastic book. And the other fantastic book that uh, you know, I mentioned when I do presentation is the book of why from Jude Dapper. And it just really go a little bit deeper on correlation and causation, which is actually the fundamental concept of the whole things we are doing here. And a lot of people just, just don't understand it deeply because for some reason, our brain is more attracted to correlation, pattern recognition than causation because it's much deeper and has more, more effort to that. So this is the, the, the other book. And, and, and the other book that I mentioned too is um, the evolution of, of human intelligence um, with uh, Stefan uh, Girlanda. He, he's part of our team now. They work on really understanding animal intelligence and human intelligence. And really it's reflect that. It reflects the pattern recognition and the reasoning. So today, the AI we have is the system one is the pattern recognition. Fantastic. I do not deny that we need it, but we need to progressively understand that there is another AI that people don't don't hear much, but uh, it's going to have a, a big impact on scale too. Thank you, Kai. Payush, you've got your hand raised. Yeah, thanks, Reza. I'm relatively new and uh, sorry, I did attend the meeting yesterday, but I was not able to speak up for personal reasons. But um, I do want to, I'll put some comments into the town hall on these three points. Um, I just want to reflect, I was speaking to a friend of mine uh, who had built some of the protection mechanisms for deep fakes and things at Facebook, and now he's doing his own startup in that general area. Um, and Reza, I mentioned to you kind of the use case I brought up uh, when I was at the NVIDIA conference last week on policy. And I guess one just comment I have is, can we make these use cases very simple for end users and saying, what are they going to get from personal AI? And the use case I brought up at the NVIDIA conference to um, that policy conversation around deep fakes was, can a baby be born today and be protected from you know, their data being abused. Um, so I, I don't know if I'm going off on more of a tangent, but um, some of these simple use cases would be very helpful to me as I try to explain the value proposition of personal AI to people who are not in this space. Um, we have a lot of deep thinkers here and extremely knowledgeable open source, you know, and technologists, but I want to be able to go explain to my mom. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Look, we, we that's that's why we're together. We 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 we're having that conversation. We should move that conversation forward. Yeah, part of the part of the issue, and maybe I'll touch on that in the funding um, uh, section, is conveying this deep thinking that we are conducting here in this super intelligent organization. Conveying it in emoji form that a VC can digest. Gosh, it's incredibly painful. Um, trying to get that, but it's necessary. It's painful, but it's necessary because the thing we're gonna that we are ideating about here could stay in this ivory tower, but for it to be relevant and to be culturally significant in the future, we it's it's important for us to be able to explain this and communicate this to to the lay individuals. Okay, um, Debbie, get us back on track. <laughs> It's called the civilians. I don't know who the they are. Okay. We're civilians. God damn it. Okay. Um, all right. Next is um, all right. Uh, AI policy update. So is that going to be Ruth? Who's, who's that going to be? I don't know. We're going to put Ruth in oh, there on the well, spot. Well, let, let's stop Risa talking for a moment. Um, so <laughs> yeah, Risa was there, um, and it 
policy is is going along um i don't know if it's fast thinking or slow thinking but it's it's rolling along nicely it is taking shape at the moment uh, marcus would like some help with um some of the stuff that he's doing which is not education related and because he's not getting that help then i can step in and get uh, help with the education policy more so i think um shad and i were were monopolizing the conversation yesterday um you've all seen the um personal ai ta i've just realized it's pta why didn't we think think of that before um there we were throwing up some issues with that that we got from the summit um when bruce was talking about trust um having that female face um could instill a, a false trust in students um who were going to that ai um for help at 2 a.m it also has some built-in biases um there's a reason why our gps has a female voice um and it might not necessarily be a good reason um and then we we were discussing the the potential pitfalls of this pta um being the legal representative of the faculty member or the the college overall um with that air canada um example of somebody was trying to get a refund because the bot had told him he could get a refund and that was upheld and air canada had to pay um we are looking at some other potential pitfalls we're just testing that that um rag really to uh, find where the problems might occur and i think we found quite a lot of them in terms of helping faculty to tidy up their um canvas shells or whatever it is they're using um we are my college is on spring break next week but I was in the uh, curriculum committee meeting yesterday and had um, my PTA with, her, with me and demonstrated it to just a few people there. I demonstrated it to the VP of instruction, who's very excited about the potential for faculty to use it um, and for that to be available to students 24 7 so then there's there's um equity issues in that that uh, um, equity could be resolved by um students having access all the time particularly when they're feeling anxious and the in the wee hours um but also the potential for administration and all those fronts uh student facing um services that could ask answer questions for students at 24 7 and we just don't have the person power to deal with that um what else do we talk about we talked about the um yeah bias trust oh yeah there's this um case that i'm following that there's another learning platform called course hero that students can sign up for um and then they get help with their essays and it has an ai generator in it and the, the idea is that they can submit their papers and get homework help it's called um but then that I've, I've been looking at it in um faculty forums where people are saying that's my assignment that's being posted on course hero or grammarly or anything else and so there's an intellectual property issue there as well um putting aside the ethics of getting ai to write your course work for you anything else Risa? you may speak <laughs> um a couple of other um developments in the policy work group an alliance with ai verified which is a singaporean um non-profit and an alliance with um uh, Transparency Coalition, uh, which is Richard Witt and uh, Richard and Jai run this um, uh, organization. It's a 501c4, which can lobby 
for legislation. 501c3s like Kwai are prohibited from lobbying. So um, in order to get policy initiatives um, proposed to become legislation, we have to partner with um, a different entity um, that is permitted to lobby. So um, they seem to be really well connected. Um, Richard Witt is, I think, former Mozilla um, and is uh, um, uh, a policy uh, attorney. And uh, so there seems to be a, 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 an opportunity for collaboration there. So that's, that's I think, on policy. Um, Debbie, uh, get us on track. Yes. Uh, now, Eunice, if you're here on the call, uh, back office automation. That was part of that meeting, and it was really, really interesting. So excited. Thanks, Debbie. How much time do I have? Do I have two hours? Uh, yes, by only. <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to give you about, what, uh, 10 minutes? Yeah, I, as much as you need. Um, I just need a few minutes just to remind the team that since Squai started, all the members' data uh, has been compiled on Google Sheets. Um, all the events have been scheduled manually. If there was a change, that becomes a nightmare. Um, Matt and I did some investigation, settled on a CRM system, um, Salesforce being the best uh, in the industry. And we have four different tracks. Basically, it's a plan. It's an implementation plan. Uh, track number one is connecting the website to the CRM. So all the new inquiries coming from the outside, new potential members and advisors will go automatically to the CRM. This should be completed by next week um, and will allow us to also import all the data we have accumulated on the Google Sheet into the CRM system. Number two is creating campaigns um, so our marketing task force can stay in touch with the members, advisors, even board members, and run ad hoc campaigns to inform <clears throat> the audience of what's happening. As an example, the scale conference, uh, we could have communicated with all members and kept them updated using the uh, automatic campaign management features. Uh, number three would be the uh, different pipelines we have for advisors, members, and again, partners. Uh, they will be classified differently, uh, which would allow different stakeholders within Kwai to manage their own pipeline of relations to maintain and manage. Um, and number four, uh, allowing um, some sort of tracking of engagement. Uh, we discussed Wednesday gamifying the uh, implementation. Uh, members, advisors earn badges based on their level of participation and involvement. It's still a concept. There are some tools to do it within the CRM system um, how to define the mechanics and implement, that's, uh, that's the work uh, that, that needs to happen. So overall, uh, and number four, I almost forgot, is just put in a layer of dashboards uh, and reports to allow the uh, management team, I would say, but also the community overall to have an idea about the health status of uh, the community, the engagement, uh communication and campaigns <clears throat> we'll try to integrate um as much as possible with the website with slack um, and with emails uh, there are some tools that we're still assessing uh reza i did take a look at uh, beehive it looks promising there is some connector with salesforce so there is potential there um, the timeline we put for ourselves is in two weeks uh automate the management of members put some approval processes for advisors. So there is a human being that interacts and looks at the records and validates that yes, this person can be an advisor or more information is needed or denied. Um, and within a month or so, this functionality should be uh, in place and uh, Google spreadsheets should be a part of the past. So that's the sweet and short update. Wow, thanks so much. Eunice, just uh, questions on that. You specifically 
um, you, you choose chose Salesforce and they've they've given us a free account with 10 seats but you the you said that they have a nonprofit cloud and a volunteer management platform yes yeah um, so Salesforce split their business a few years ago into the dot com where they make their billions but also the dot org uh, company that caters specifically to nonprofits. And they have some huge nonprofits like Red Cross or UNESCO running on it. Wow. And, and, and part of uh, Mark Benioff's charitable heart, he dedicates 10 enterprise level licenses to each nonprofit. Um, uh, and, and that's their way of giving back. And the value of each license is around $100 thirty dollars a month so oh. basically that's a hundred and that's a thirteen hundred or so that salesforce is contributing to quite indirectly um, yeah, great so we can put them on our partner web page you could and they will be <laughs> excited they'll be thrilled okay very good um and and another question and this is on behalf of christian i guess you know we're launching the emir chapter christian's going to be holding weekly public meetings in their time zone um, soon, but there's going to be a whole funnel there. Does this also um, spill over to to uh, Christian? It does. It does. So all the programs basically were dividing, were conquering the world. There will be a North America mm -hmm. bubble chapter, Latin America, uh, MEN, and, and the Pacific Pacific Asia uh, mm -hmm. zone, and. Um, the programs will be similar. We have fundamentals, we have tools, and we have public policy. And it's up to the head of each chapter or global mm -hmm. chapter to customize the program, create the events under the program, run their own campaigns. And the way we're structuring this, the hierarchy will allow for the, for example, the HQ in, in uh, LA to have a global view of how the activity is progressing in different regions, what programs are active, what campaigns are running, how many members we have in each region. Uh, we can even have regions compete, right, on involvement and, and engagement, um, but all of it will be possible because of this structured hierarchical uh, approach to defining programs and campaigns. Great, okay. So, um, I, Christian, I hate to um, uh, call on you at such short notice. I should have actually put you in the agenda. Um, can you just give us a brief shout out on behalf of the EMEA chapter um, about your weekly public meeting and any, any update? And if not, then we can move on. Uh, okay. Christian's probably busy. Okay, Debbie, let's let's get us back on track. And, and maybe Christian, when we come to the member voices, you can talk up then. Okay. And we have the last, which is the funding. And after that, we'll do member voices and then to wrap. Right. Okay, very good. So before before, well, part of going into funding is actually a shout out to Carsten and Toby. So um Carsten, hate to put you on the spot, but look, a couple of things. Carson's ex Red Hat was instrumental in getting us a great meeting with Red Hat. Red Hat's response was, "Well, I'm looking at your website. Where, where do we make our um, corporate uh, sponsorship? Um, uh, <laughs> where do we send the money?" Okay, so look, that 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 was an initial sort of uh, um, sort of kumbaya meeting. Um, the the devil's in the details, um, but we've now got a path forward to getting a big player like Red Hat to sponsor the uh, initiatives that are going on in Kwai. Um, secondly, um, nice hook up, Carsten, excellent. Um, so secondly, um, Toby and Carsten are actually our sort of uh, evangelists going forward. They, they're attending conferences on our behalf. They uh, were at um, NVIDIA GTC. They reported briefly on that last week. Um, plans for April are to attend Project VRM, Pro um, IIW, which is Internet Identity Workshop, and OSS, which is the open source um, uh, Linux uh, um, 
uh, conference in in Seattle, and um, uh, they're going to go there representing us. We're going to do double duty. I'll, I'll be doing what one group of conferences in in the in the Bay Area, and um, Toby and Carsten are going to attend that. Guys, if you if you're on the call, you you can speak up here or. or um, uh, yeah. Up. Hey, thank you. Um, I just want to remind everybody that you know you all can be an evangelist virtually. And so, although we are the people in the field representing us, I want to remind everybody that we need some help virtually. Ooh, sorry, my 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 apologies for I don't know if you guys hear this. Carson, I'll let you take over. We 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 don't hear anything. Oh, do. cool. Okay. Yeah, you're so, fine. Go ahead. All right, great. So yeah, GTC. I'll just give a quick recap again. It was great definitely our target audience we've got a call i've got a call after this with uh, mongo so we'll see if we can shake the tree at mongo um i i put this call on the on the uh, engineering call but anyone that has any ideas about how mongo and us can align technically just drop me some notes it's just talking points from my conversation with dave that would be appreciated um and it's looking good the pipeline is filling up uh we have calls that are starting to be scheduled so it's uh the momentum is going we just need you guys to amplify post content drive awareness the more awareness we drive for the organization the more sponsors want to be associated to us so i'll let you say, say a few words carson as well Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, just a lot of thoughts come to mind. I guess uh, I, I don't think I've got anything to add right now. Thanks. Okay. Debbie, you got your hand up. Yeah, and we'll no. be on the hackathon. Okay. Yeah, just, sorry. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Wait, I, I got a little bit lost. What, what was the, um, Toby, what was the question you bounced back to me? That's where I was getting a little bit because I was thinking about something else when you passed the mic over. Oh, just about GTC and some of the sentiment that we've received this week from people that we spoke to on the follow-up. Uh, got you, okay. Um, yeah, I think, um, uh, uh, I don't know if I got any insight together. Like I said, I was actually thinking uh, something entirely different. Um, I got, I apologize. I got caught on the word evangelist. Um, and I just, yeah. I want to, I, I guess what I'm going to use is my opportunity to just make a cultural note. One of the things that I can do here, and, I, and I'm not sure how many other people, you know, have the similar kind of experience or thing and so forth, but um, just across the industry, we've been, uh, we've been moving away from the term evangelist and moving towards the term advocate or advocacy. Uh, and there's lots of good reasons for that, but just kind of a heads up on that one, we might want to modernize ourselves in that area. Um, otherwise, Fantastic. I got nothing else to add today. Thanks. Thanks for that. Okay. Debbie, get us back on track. Perfect. And lastly, um, did we do funding? That would okay. be Bri briefly. I mean, both of what Carsten and Toby are doing, they're at our, our advanced scouts, filling the um, filling my dance card with meetings um, that that hopefully lead to funding. Um, there is a VC meeting today. Um, you know, I don't know what relevance we have for a VC a friend of VC, so we can. Um, we can have some exploratory conversations with them. I want to thank uh, Michael Nathan for helping us review and refine and critiquing our funding deck. Thanks so much. This is important, uh, important work. Um, and then, hey, you know, any, anyone can help in, in that, but I think we've, we've got um, some good traction there. And uh, that's all I want to say on funding. And now we want to hear from new members. Um, so if we have any new members, would love to hear from you to say hello. Uh, so please raise your hand so I can identify. So Dennis, welcome. Please say. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, my name is Dennis Mangrabang. Um, I found out about Kwai at the summit at scale and wasn't sure if I wanted to join or not. Uh, this meeting has definitely convinced me to join, so uh, I'll join today and then find out uh, how I can help. I'm a 
embedded and Linux developer. Thank you. Fantastic. Phenomenal. Thank you for coming and thanks for joining. Um, next, I believe it was Eric. Uh, please. Hi, my name's um, Eric. Uh, people actually call me Hacker. Um, it's my real surname. And of course, I do cybersecurity um, for a living. I work at Kensho, the AI division within S&P Global. Um, I saw Bruce Schneier's um, video clip. It was on his uh, site this morning. Um, and so I took a look at that and said, this sounded really interesting. Um, and uh, there's an awful lot of security issues with large language models. Um, and if something is going to be safe for the public, it's got to be secure um, to protect their privacy. So I thought maybe I could lend a hand there. Thank you so much. And Great next. name. <laughs> And this is a real background. This is my home office. I also have to live up to having the name Hacker and, and meet the cultural expectations of that. Pretty impressive. Um, Oleg? Yes, I am here. Good, I guess, good morning, colleagues. Uh, this is my first time here. Uh, I've been invited by Toby uh, to actually to 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 listen a bit. Uh, that's really unusual and exciting opportunity opportunity I got. I believe uh, I'll have to define how can I contribute to the to the initiative. Uh, my background is in the IT. I spent over 20 years uh, for various uh, IT companies as a BDM for Google, Yandex, uh, which is Russian Google. And for the financial sector, I'm actually coming from the finance, from Visa. And uh, yeah, uh, I'm uh, also an entrepreneur. I recently sold one of my companies to the global MarTech player. So yeah, that's it. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, anybody else? Okay, I think we're good. And I think this well, is it. I, I think we should we should we should uh, call on some folks. Do we recognize any new names? I, um, I don't know. I'm 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 going through it. Oh, okay, we've got Daniel Wilson. There we go. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm at my work here. Hey, I just thought I'd chime in. Yeah, I, I heard about this group uh, through some friends that do similar things in Singapore. And uh, I just came out of an MIT cohort uh, focused on AI uh, application development. Uh, I have been leading a think tank for the last 15 weeks uh, every Saturday where I'm able to reach a lot of people and around the world. I've been asked recently to be a contributing author and maybe run the podcast for Data Science Central. Um, I'm really close. I am a personal assistant of Dr. Vincent Granville here in the Seattle area. He is a top voice in machine learning. In fact, Data Science Central which is his old company. They were acquired by Tech Target, and uh, it's an interesting uh, ecology out here in Seattle. Uh, I personally do Python programming, but I go way back uh, to Linux and Bash in the early 2000s and um, even further back to basic in the 80s. Uh, however, uh, to keep it modern, I have a lot of people on my team that are very uh, conscientious of these types of goals that Kawhi is, is you know, su supporting and, and has in their sites. I support a lot of these goals. I have my concerns. I have my insights to share. I know I had a meeting with you, uh, Reza, next week. And we can talk, but I just wanted to say that I can offer my platforms to help promote and evangelize further. Um, you know, this, any any aspects that we need to get out there with people, and you know, in any way I can help, I'm, I'm here for it. And uh, yeah, so and this is a growing thing uh, for me. I have a lot more outreach coming, and yeah, I just wanted to lend that to the platform and to everybody. Looking forward to talking with you, Daniel. Excellent. Yeah. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Have a great day there. Thank you, and welcome to Kwai. Uh, Ruth, welcome to Kwai. Thank you so much. This is great. Thank great group. Um, something just um, came back into my brain. Um, I was talking to uh, li our librarian on campus, one of our librarians, and she has proposed um, an AI course. It's a non-credit course that 
that is hopefully going to run over the summer um that because we're having this ongoing battle about um whether we allow the use of ai in classes and there are some people who are so vehemently opposed to anything new uh, they're still writing on parchment i think um but she's proposed this course that will help students in the in the same way that we had to help them learn how to use google and so on um but it's in sacramento it's been approved by our curriculum committee it's in sacramento and maybe it will be available over the summer but it's just a non-credit course a, a four or five week thing um to help students understand um ai thank you ruth shad yeah, Ruth, uh, that, that's great news. Um, question about that. Is, is, is that envisioned to be an, an online course or will that be a in campus, you know, at the, the College of the Canyons or do you know any information about that? Typically, um, typically we have to offer um, in multiple modalities, if possible. Um, I mean, we've even tried to offer dance as a distance learning thing. Um, so it could be both. Okay, that, that's great news. Do you know if that will be on the weekend or will that be uh, normal weekdays or what evenings or what's the plan for that? It, again, it could be anything because you, um, particularly with non-credit, you're often dealing with adult learners and people who have full-time jobs. So if they can be as flexible as possible when they're offering it in person. Um, so it would be evenings. Uh, there are some non-credit classes at weekends as well online makes all that so much easier because um, people can just dip in whenever they need to. Great. Chad, you're probably qualified to teach that class. Yeah, do you need a job? <laughs> <laughs> um, I am looking, yes, thank you. Okay, I'll put your name in the hat. Um, Andre, and after that, I feel that um, we should wrap it up right. so we can go on to the hackathon. Go, Andre. Uh, so my only comment to Ruth was, what's the, what's the cost of the course? Um, if it's non-credit, it won't be very expensive. Um, I don't know yet, but uh, um, I don't know. I, I have to look, and then I can let you know. If you want to sign up, Andre, I'll, I'll let you know. And I might know a couple of other people who want to sign up. So Sure. I, Look, ultimately, you know, our goal is for maybe quiet to become accredited as well, yeah. so that your tour of duty that you um, enter in uh, quite is more formalized. You, you're, it's not just filling a space in your LinkedIn resume, but it's um, it's it's uh, earning you some credential. Um, Serge, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, just another really quick comment about what you just posted in, in uh, um, the chat about the OSS Summit in Seattle. Um, I was just wondering if anybody else is attending from the community and heading up and, uh, you know, maybe you could have a, um, you know, get together or something. I'm still uncertain if I'm going to get going there, but it's going to say it's like it's the conference. So. Yeah, and I yeah, that'd be great. Daniel's just thumbs up. Um, so it's you, it's uh, Toby and Carsten, um, or, or, or it's good, just going to be Carsten. Toby, me, and Ruth will be covering the conference that's unfortunately running at exactly the same time in the Bay Area, um, um, and that is the um, Project VRM and IIW, and they're concurrent. So we're splitting our um, our efforts. Great, thank you. That was it. One minute to wrap up. Okay. Happy Quai Day, everybody. Um, it's the 36th Quai Day. It's also Good Friday. So, um, and Sunday is Easter, uh, Easter weekend. We're also in the middle of Ramadan at the moment. So, um, you can, as, as we did in our family, we enjoyed both um types of feasting we were we were opportunists in that way the rasuls with one s were the christians the rasuls with two s's were the muslims but we were muslim with a small m as my dad would say um 
not evangelists by any means. So thanks, um, thanks for schooling us on to on our uh, terminology. I'll try and use the word advocacy rather than evangelist. Um, uh, but uh, no, no uh, uh, messianic um, uh, connotations um, attached to what we're doing. Okay, so thanks so much uh, for attending. Um, I'll, this is the, the the meeting that I look forward to each week. It um, it gets better and better each week. Our movement's growing, and um, the aim, as in the we stated in the town hall, the aim for posing those three questions is to to end up with a movement that is self-sustaining, that is self-sufficient, that is not going cap in hand for donations continuously in order to fund its ambitions. And I think that's going to give us um, the greatest power to resist the monopolizing forces that currently control AI. Thank you all for participating. We're going to move on next to the hackathon. Thanks.